I've got a top five. Oh. Top five mind-blowing moments from divisional playoff weekend. Let's Hit it. it. Hit it. High five. One, two, three, four, five. Rich's top five. That is correct. I need my music and I need bells. it all to start with the way it started on divisional playoff weekend. We start in Baltimore where the Ravens were up 10 to 3. Four minutes and 17 seconds left in the half. The Houston Texans couldn't move it a lick on offense. So Steven Sims had to move it on special teams. A 67-yard dash from Steven Sims of the Houston Texans. That was mind-blowing because the Texans had tied the Ravens in Baltimore in a game that the Ravens appeared to be dominating. Up 10-3 to right before halftime. They tied it at 10 apiece, and it was a sight that we had not seen in quite some time. It was the first playoff punt return for a touchdown since Trendon Holiday. Remember him? Of the Denver Broncos. Returned one 90 yards in the 2012 Divisional Round Contest. We had not seen a punt return for a touchdown in any playoff game since he did it for the Broncos. A record 90-yard punt return that still remains to this day not broken in the playoffs. That's how rare it was. Steven Sims is number five. Number four on this list is the first four snaps in Buffalo. This was a mind-blowing sequence. First snap of the game is a pass (laughs) out to Stephon Diggs, and the ball is loose, ripped loose, and it's free, and Dalton Kincaid bats it out of bounds. If you had, I know in the Super Bowl, you can apparently wager on what the first play is or what the first score is. That's or what I've heard. You know what I mean? Like, heard. I, I don't know. Can you wager on a, a forced fumble and illegal batting penalty to start a divisional playoff that game? Was nuts. That was the first <laughs> yeah. snap of the game. And then the second snap of the game was when Mike Edwards collided over the middle on Stefan Diggs. And Edwards, one of the most important players in the back end of the defense for Kansas City, got knocked out of the game with a concussion. So stop play, and then the Bills have to call a timeout because the clock is winding down even after that stoppage of play. And then on third and 17, Josh Allen scrambles up the middle. And I don't know, do you have on your bingo card a lateral past the line (laughs) of scrimmage like Kelsey did in a way to... Kadarius Tony, the last time these two teams met, Ty Johnson grabs it and damn near gets a first down, and it was a, apparent to me a forward lateral, and Andy Reid didn't even challenge it. So you've got even controversy about whether this was the right call and whether a coach should challenge. And Andy Reid has to be like three snaps in the game. You were telling me from upstairs I should throw a red challenge flag. Because, yeah, the yeah. Bills on the fourth snap of the game went for it on yeah. fourth down from their own 40. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, what the hell's going on? Yeah. That's the way this game started. It's, it's, awesome. it's like what Stephon Diggs said. The hell going on back in the day? Number three on the mind-blowing yeah, moments. Going on. That's it. <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> Top five mind-blowing moments from the divisional round. Number three, his season was unbelievable. Everyone wondering, can he do it? Is he the real deal? You actually, in in a way, alienated your Hall of Fame quarterback by trading up to draft him and then sat him for a couple of years and then finally started him when you're wondering, is this Jordan Love's season? Is this his job? Can he do it? And then he not only proves that he can do it, he wins a playoff. He makes the playoffs, wins a playoff game in Dallas, and then puts puts the scare. I mean, downright frightening moments for the San Francisco 49ers faithful. Watching him go up 21-14, but now he's down by three. And this is mind-blowing that the last throw, the final throw of Jordan Love's breakout season may have been his worst. What was he doing? Throwing it across the middle late into triple coverage when all he needed was a field goal to force overtime. And this kid, all he did was the right moves, was playing with his neck up, with his remarkable neck down ability, and also the heart that beats in his chest and the fortitude in his gut 
that he would just turn into some green quarterback and flip it over the middle. He even referred to it as a mortal sin. That's mind-blowing to me that Jordan Love's final throw of his season was quite possibly his worst. Number two on my mind-blowing moments from divisional playoff weekend was the Buffalo Bills fake punting it Hmm. in the second half of a game because the Chiefs not only had 10 men on the field, but Sean McDermott said afterwards he thought that maybe, just maybe, they were having trouble stopping an offense that everyone was wondering if it could ever flip a switch, and sure enough, they did. And it was DeMar Hamlin, of all people, with the ball in his hands, and he stopped short, and they turn it over on downs, only to have two snaps later getting it back because the Chiefs turn it over by handing it to Miko Hardman, of all people, to hand it on the goal line and put it in his hands after he had fumbled earlier in the game, and he fumbles it through the end zone and no blood. That was unbelievable. I mean, talk about mind-blowing. So the Bills are going to do this? Really? And then they don't get it. And then they get it back because of the fumble through the end zone rule. Because the Chiefs give it to Miko Hardman. And you know I hate this rule so much. And I actually came as close as I possibly have ever come to agreeing with you, Brockman, that it's it's just right in terms of being punitive only because they gave it to Miko Hardman of all people. What are they doing? Nah, I, don't I mean, too cute. You, you can't even <laughs> call it too cute. But Andy Reid and Mahomes survived. Number one is just three three words. Three words. It, it's simple. Another wide right. You got to be kidding me. I mean, for Buffalo to lose in the manner in which they lost. I mean, Tyler Bass's field goal couldn't be just short, tipped and short. It couldn't go wide left. Couldn't even just go over an upright so damn high that we're having some sort of an argument over it. Was it good? Was it not? No, it's got to go wide right of all places for the Buffalo Bills and for them to lose that way. That is unbelievable and easily the most mind-blowing moment from divisional playoff weekend for sure. Do you think we need one more? All right, George. All right, we'll get one more. I'll do this because we haven't talked about the Lions or the Bucks game in any of my top five. So my one more is every Jameer Gibbs touch of the football. (laughs) Every single time he touched the football. This kid had a 31-yard rushing touchdown in the fourth quarter to give Detroit the game eventual winning touchdown, 24-17 to go up and lead the game. Gibbs is the youngest player in NFL history with a go-ahead touchdown in the fourth quarter or overtime of a playoff game ever. At 21 years, 307 days old when he did it. And you want to talk about what a remarkable season he's had. 13 scrimmage touchdowns now in 2023, including the playoffs. He has put himself in the mix. Third all-time, most by a rookie in Detroit history, only behind Barry Sanders in 89 with 14 and the great Billy Sims in 1980 with 16. And when, when he was drafted, by the way, and everyone, you know, and he's going to be, we'll be he'll, we'll, he'll be in the same breath as Barry Sanders and Billy Sims. Get out of here. And 100% is one of the guys on the Lions offense that this weekend, if he touches the football as much as he should and has the ability to flip a field like he can or go the distance and hit home runs like he's what uh miggy cabrera and uh cecil fielder combined i'm just trying to nice. get you know some good, big heavy good, hitters good. for detroit uh, tigers baseball if he can hit home runs like that he can absolutely be a main reason why the lions are going to upset the 49ers and go to the super bowl so every jameer gibbs touch is my final one more moment of top five Divisional playoff, yeah, mind so blowing good. moments. Don't you think? <laughs> I, you so know good. what I mean? Like, it's entirely possible. Why not? And everyone's like, whoa, you drafted him at 12, right? But they said they would have taken him earlier. I heard. They had him ahead of Bijan. I heard that the Lions, when they drafted Gibbs 12, beat several teams that have dynamic running backs already to the punch. Mm. And is exactly the type of play I thought Tony Pollard would give you Cowboys. And I'm not doing this to, to troll. I'm not doing it to troll. 
but that's exactly the sort of home run ability that we saw from Pollard the last couple of years that we didn't see. And I'm wondering if it was a knee injury and he's coming back or, well, it was, or man, whatever. Pollard was the third down back coming in, and, and then he had to be the workhorse. Jameer Gibbs, who I drafted on my fantasy team, isn't the workhorse. Montgomery is the workhorse. Jameer Gibbs is that change of pace, and he comes in and he puts you to sleep. Like, so I think that may have been the difference. That's true, too. And That's also, true if, too. You, if you ever questioned it, just watch Detroit's – Draft coverage. Do you see how happy they were when they knew that they were going to draft this kid? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that should tell you something right there. Yeah, they, they were all on, they on him. They knew. They knew. They they knew they were going to go get him. And um, and it was a head scratcher. It's just like, oh, okay, so we're going to choose this kid, 12th overall, with all the help you need? Mm-hmm. Well, he helped wrap it up or take the lead in a divisional playoff game. And I'm telling you, you know, Let's just see what he can do against San Francisco. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 